Because Lucullus knew he would have to battle the forces of Mithridates on both land and sea, he raised, not just legions, but a navy as well. Once he arrived in Anatolia, his army was joined by an additional two legions that had been left there from Sulla's last campaign in the east. The first thing Lucullus did was to rescue his co-consul, Cotta, who was besieged in Bithynia. Once Cotta was relieved, Lucullus pushed on. His fleet defeated two of Mithridates' fleets, one off the coast of Ilium, or modern-day Despotica, a presumed site of Troy, and the other off the coast of Lemnos in Greece. Unfortunately, on land, Lucullus was forced to pursue a different strategy. Using his legions, he maneuvered Mithridates' 300,000-man army around the map, while simultaneously avoiding direct battle against their deadly cavalry. Known as cataphracts, the cavalries of the Eastern Kingdoms, both riders and horses, were more heavily armoured than their Roman counterparts. In addition, Eastern riders were trained, from a young age, to turn completely around astride their charging steeds, in order to fire at the army while mobile. Because many organised and disciplined armies had been torn to shreds by Pontic and Parthian cataphracts, Lucullus did his best to avoid direct confrontation until he could gain the upper hand. Next, Mithridates laid siege to the city of Cyzicus, or modern-day Balakizir, which had allied with Rome. Cyzicus was located on a very narrow peninsula which Lucullus recognised would hinder the movements of his deadly cataphracts. After Mithridates constructed siege towers, battering rams, catapults, and other siege equipment, Lucullus marched his army in and then laid siege to the Pontic king. Building his own siege works to prevent Mithridates' army from foraging for supplies, or sending for aid, Lucullus planned simply to sit down and starve him out. Mithridates attempted to manipulate his way into the town of Cyzicus by trying to convince the citizens that the Roman army was actually part of his own, extra auxiliary force, there to guarantee his victory. But Lucullus had already arranged for a team to secretly infiltrate the town in order to correctly advise the citizens of the real situation. Cyzicus, maintaining its trust in Rome, did not open its gates to Mithridates. Ultimately unable to take the town, and completely cut off from foraging for supplies, Mithridates' army soon began to face the realities of starvation. Sickness also invaded his camp as a result of failing to properly bury or burn the corpses of those whom starvation had already claimed. Finally, making the decision that Cyzicus was a lost cause, Mithridates began looking for any opportunity to escape with whatever numbers he could take. A winter storm finally provided Mithridates the opportunity to withdraw. With Lucullus in pursuit, Mithridates, and approximately 20,000 of his men boarded ships leaving what remained of his ground forces to march along the coast. Lucullus pursued the land army and engaged him along the river Granicus. This historic river, which marked the location of Alexander the Great's first victory over the Persian Empire, also became the site where Lucullus, with only 30,000 men, and approximately 2,500 cavalry, defeated what remained of Mithridates' 300,000-man army. Plutarch tells us that more than 200,000 died during the battle. In order to prevent Lucullus from taking the northern land route into Pontus, Mithridates and his 20,000 soldiers occupied the town of Heracle Pontica, or modern-day Caradenas Eregli. But Lucullus did not attempt to enter Pontus this way, nor did he want to engage in yet another lengthy siege. Ordering Cotta's legions to besiege Heracle Pontica, Lucullus marched his legions towards Galatia. Because the Galatians had no love for Mithridates, and no wish to be plundered by the Romans, they welcomed the armies of Lucullus, who entered Pontus through the lands of Galatia. Once there, and without awaiting senatorial orders, Lucullus allowed his army to plunder every town upon which they came. Town by town, village by village, Mithridates' homeland was ravaged by the legions of Lucullus, and the Pontic king, who had lost the majority of his army, could do nothing but watch. Having raised another 40,000 men and 4,000 cavalry, Mithridates, after escaping Heracle Pontica, moved to occupy the town of Kibera. There, he waited for Lucullus, whom he knew would eventually come for him. Unfortunately, when Lucullus did finally arrive, around 72 BC, after successfully plundering a vast majority of Pontus, 
Mithridates' new army was no match. They fell quickly, forcing the king to flee once more with whatever forces he could muster. Mithridates, who was running out of options, attempted to go after the supply trains being fed to Lucullus from Rome's ally, Cappadocia. Unfortunately, what started out as a simple attack on a military caravan quickly turned into an all-out and decisive battle. The valley in which the two armies met was too narrow for Mithridates to effectively deploy his cataphracts. Additionally, Lucullus's men had also begun targeting the horse's legs, which were the only part of the beasts that were vulnerable. Again, Mithridates' forces were defeated, and again Mithridates fled. With his flight, Mithridates' new army panicked and fell apart. Lucullus took advantage of the chaos and overran his camp. The men were slain, and the looting began. Penniless, and now without even a single legion, the king turned beggar absconded into the kingdom of Armenia to request succor from his father-in-law, King Tigranus. Rather than pursue Mithridates into Armenia, Lucullus sent his quester, who was also his brother-in-law, Publius Claudius Pulcher, to negotiate the extradition of King Mithridates from King Tigranus. But, because Mithridates was married to one of Tigranus's daughters, the Armenian king refused to hand over his defeated son-in-law. Lucullus took the opportunity afforded by Mithridates' absence to continue his unsanctioned conquest of Pontus. Besieging town after town, Lucullus invested and organized Mithridates' homeland into Rome's newest province.